Hi everyone, here's a quick demonstration of using the Stream Deck Plus in Adobe Premiere Pro. This is just a little starter profile that I've created. Um, these dials along the bottom all have dial stacks, which is when you've got this little icon here that shows that you've got multiple commands set up to it. Basically set up all your dials as dial stacks because you're just going to add more controls to them as you go. So I've got my navigation things here. Plays forward. If I tap the LCD, it'll pause. And if I go backwards, it'll go backwards. If I go forwards, double speed, or even more speed, it just goes faster. The more you turn it, the faster it goes. And then I've got jumping to the next and previous edits as a way of moving down the timeline. Then frame by frame. And then here I've got zooming, zooming in on the timeline. Then I've got expanding my audio track height. And tapping this will zoom to fit. Then I've got uh, my trimming functions. So here I can trim left side or expand the right side frame by frame. And then trimming to the playhead, either the right hand side or the left hand side. And then also I've got ripple trim to the playhead, so bringing everything back. And I've just got my undo redo cue here, which is easy to jump through a lot of changes quickly. Now I've got new sequence from clip. If I have some gaps in my timeline, I can close up the gaps. Favorite effects will launch the favorite effects uh, folder in my effects panel. Export still will just generate a still based on where the playhead is. Then audio gain, jump over to here, would bring up the audio gain controls, quickly changing that. Frame hold. Just insert a frame hold, see, which is now still. And then nesting, we'll just bring up nested sequence. And then this would be two times speed. So there you go. You can swipe through more pages and more controls quite easily. Having the swipe makes it much more efficient. You don't have to use up one of your keys for page navigation, which is great. So here we are in Final Cut Pro. We've got the same set of controls along the bottom. Playing forward, pausing, rewinding, and then going forward a lot. Then I've also got jumping between the edits. And then I've got zoom. I've set this to zoom to fit. And then adjusting the clip height with that one. I've also set this to big waveforms to make big waveforms. Then, just zoom to fit. If we have an edit point, we can then trim frame by frame, as well as trimming to the playhead. And then I've also got big trims on the bottom, or trimming frame by frame. And then I've got my undo redo. Then I've got some things set to inserting a gap. Um, compounding a clip. And then being able to break it apart again. I have also got this set to add color board and jump to the color inspector. So you're straight into grading, which obviously then you can mess with. And I've set this to a global effects toggle to toggle all effects on and off. And last but not least, it's got a couple of speed controls. So double speed and also adding a frame hold in the middle. So just a quick example of what you can do with the Stream Deck Plus in Final Cut Pro. Okay, here we are in Avid Media Composer and I've got the same set of controls across the bottom. Got JK and L for controlling that playback. Seems to be less responsive for me for some reason in Avid. I don't know why it's not as fluid. I'm not sure if it's the footage I'm using or how I brought it in. I don't know. Then I've also got going to the next edit. Jumping along. And moving frame by frame. 
Then I've got zoom in and out, seem to fit. I've also got the track height, which makes everything bigger and smaller. Then if we jump to trimming, we can trim Oh, finally caught up. Trim big. Trim frame by frame. Again, there seems to be a real lag here. I don't know why. Avid is not loving it. These are HD clips, so there's nothing particularly challenging about them. And again, trimming to the playhead. Let's just zoom in a second here. And then I've got my undo, redo, cue, as always, which it seems to be just about catching up with. Then I've got copy to the source monitor, so it's setting an out point, whatever's in between those two parts. When you copy to the source monitor, you can then bring back down again. Oh, it's not that track selected. Copy to the source monitor. Bring back down. Collapse these into a one track thing. And then we've got extend, which is when you put an in point. It will extend back to that. Or if you've got an out point here, then when you press extend, it'll jump to the out point. Um, got full screen playback. And jumping to the last active bin, which has jumped over here to the project bin. And then I can add video tracks and audio tracks. So there you have it. There's a little example of what you can do in Avid. Um, I'm not sure why my playback and responsiveness isn't always fluid, as fluid as it could be in Avid. Seems to be that sometimes it works really well. Again, there's a lag. And sometimes it doesn't. But hopefully, giving you a sense of what you can do. Obviously, you want to customize this to fit your own workflows and suit how you like to work. But yeah, it's very easy to set up and it's great fun to use.